my husband tried to like cheerleader stunt my body into <laughs> the bed and which did not work at all because it was just putting too much pressure on my pain i was in so much pain even with the pain meds at that point it was still like very painful hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello welcome my name is Brittany johnson and i would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel give this video a thumbs up and turn your post notifications on so you never miss a video with me today's video is really exciting and definitely highly recommended um if you haven't seen my last day in the life of a newborn vlog i got a ton of comments on there saying that you guys would love to see a video on how my c-section recovery went and what i would recommend for you guys to get through that recovery process so today's video i will be speaking to you guys about the honest truth of c-section recovery and my tips and tricks that i think you would really enjoy and be really helpful for you for all you mamas who are about to endure a c-section and go through the whole recovery process you will make it trust me you will be just fine um, but it is a hard recovery so i will be giving you 10 tips that really helped me get through this past week and a half of recovery so if you guys would like to see more about this topic then just keep on watching all right i feel so weird this is like my first sit down video in a really long time i feel like the last time i sat down and filmed the video was maybe my like second trimester of pregnancy recap i think maybe maybe not i don't know mom brain don't don't uh quote me on that but i usually do vlogs because it's honestly easier than doing sit down videos around my house so my husband and daughter are out in the living room so if you hear them hopefully you won't but if you do just ignore that <laughs> um but yeah so i um, if you are new here, I just had my baby girl named Everly Drew, um, Everly Drew Johnson, that is her name. She is so beautiful, so cute, and so sweet. We are literally obsessed with her. Obviously, we're biased, but she is beautiful. Um, I had her on April 22nd, 2020, so if you are um, watching this, probably, I'm filming this on Sunday, hopefully, hoping to upload this on Monday, and I don't even know what the date is today, but... I think it's like May 4th, maybe May 3rd or May 4th. I'm not sure, but she is not even a week and a half old, but this video was highly requested. And I had a lot of mamas who were saying like they were going into their C-section recovery like this week. So I just really wanted to get this video out for you guys because I know how scary it is to go into a C-section. And if you're new here, this is, this was my second C-section um, that I went through. I went through one five years ago with my daughter, Hayden who is obviously five years old now, um, but I went through my first C-section then. It was an emergency. Basically, I just was not progressing, so they just decided to go through with a C-section. This time around, I did... <laughs> this time around, I did attempt a V-back. If you haven't watched my labor and delivery video, I will link that up here, so definitely check that out. Um, that is one of my highly viewed videos, so I'm super proud of that video. I love it, and... Definitely grab some tissues because it is a little emotional. Um, but I did a attempt a VBAC. I don't want to say it was not successful because I don't want to like have that negative vibe around me. But um, I did end up with a C-section. But I did actually progress to 7 centimeters. But then baby girl's cord was wrapped around her neck twice. So I had to end up going into a C-section unfortunately. But she's here. She's healthy. And that's all that matters. So this was my second C-section recovery last the one five years ago, all I remember from it was it was just super painful, the recovery. Like, the actual surgery wasn't very painful, but afterwards was super painful. And I was a single mama at that time. Right now, this time around, I'm married, so I have my husband um, here to help me out. But five years ago, I was a single mama dealing with that and trying to breastfeed and dealing with, you know, a newborn and a C-section recovery. It was very difficult. I do also want to put a disclaimer out there that this is my own personal experience. Obviously, everyone's body is so different. So my experience may not be your experience. My journey is not your journey. So um, what I am experiencing, you may have a complete different perspective. So I don't want to put my opinions onto your, your mind. So if yours is different than mine or if you are more swollen, longer than me or less than me, like, that's fine. Do you, boo? I'm just telling you how it went for me. Um, so basically, I went to C-section at 1 in the morning, or 105 was when my daughter was born. 
um, obviously like cut out of me, taken out of me. Um, and then they did the surgery to stitch me up. And then it actually took me almost four hours to recover because um, we believe that the anesthesia or anesthesiologist gave way too much um, anesthesia <laughs> um, to my body. So I was literally like, I don't want to say paralyzed, but I literally couldn't move from like my chin down. Um, and that was not the case with my other C-section. I could still like move my body. Um, I couldn't feel like obviously like here and down because the, obviously they're cutting, but I couldn't even move my arms or neck. I ended up throwing up and like throwing up in my mouth because I literally could not even turn my neck. It was just really rough. Um, but I'm not going to get into all of that just because you can watch my whole labor and delivery video and it'll explain it all there. Um, but so it took me about four hours to recover to get my blood pressure up because it was from like down low 80s over 30s. And if you don't know, your blood pressure should be around 120 over 80. So it was like bottoming and they could not get it up. So I was in recovery for almost four hours, finally moved to the postpartum room. Um, and it was about four o'clock, almost five o'clock in the morning at that point. Me, baby girl, and my husband ended up falling asleep. I fell asleep for maybe like two or three hours and then the nurses were coming in to do, you know, just those hourly checks. So I just remember waking up and trying to sit up for the first time and so much pain. I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be horrible. <laughs> um, my doctor, I don't know exactly what it's called, but she does this thing where she puts an ex like a layer of medicine in the stitching or something like that um, that was like better for numbing your pain for like up to like three days you'll be like numb is what she was claiming and so I was honestly expecting me not to be in pain because if I'm numb I'm not in pain like that's how I was assuming not the case for me I was in so much pain I was like please give me pain medication um, when my doctor came in a few hours later, I was like, when am I going to get the pain medication? Because I'm in so much pain. Um, and so they ended up giving me more pain medication and all that because I literally could barely even like move my body whatsoever. Um, and I don't know if that's because of what had happened with the anesthesiologist that my body just did not recover very well. And I was just in more pain than usual. Um, but I, it was really hard for me to get up. So they were giving me pain medication through my IV um, and then also oral. So when I was on the pain medication, I felt a lot better. I was able to finally get up and go to the bathroom. Um, I was really scared to pee because I couldn't remember if it was like painful to pee or not. And I peed and I peed just fine. It, it barely, like if anything, stung like the teeniest bit. And I think it's just because I hadn't peed in a while. Like that's really why. Um, but did not hurt at all. Um, you don't have to like poop or anything at the hospital. Um, in my situation, I didn't have to poop before I left or anything. I just pee. They have you like pee twice, I think, I'm pretty sure. They have like a certain amount you have to reach. Um, and when the nurse came in finally, like in the morning and everything, she had me go get up to go pee. She gave me the pain medication. And then she also gave me a belly band um, to have just in case I wanted to wear it. I didn't wear it um, for maybe like a couple hours or maybe it was, no, it was, yeah, I didn't wear it the first couple hours. Because I was just like, I don't really think I'll wear it. Um, but I ended up changing out of my hospital gown. Um, changing into the robe that I brought. My hospital gown robe or whatever. That was more pretty and made me feel like more comfortable. Um, more like at home or whatever. So I changed into that. And that's pretty much how the beginning of my recovery went. I wasn't in a ton of pain, but the pain meds definitely helped. Um, and then that night, so... You know, that was during like 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. But that night, um, my baby was cluster feeding. So I was having to sit up and back and forth, like breastfeeding the entire night. Basically, if you're not breastfeeding, then maybe it's a different situation. But I was having to like push the buttons. And I just remember it was so difficult for me to like reach the buttons on the side of my bed. Because I couldn't reach them like this because I couldn't move far enough back. And then I couldn't reach them like this because I couldn't move my torso. Like it was just miserable. Um, and this is all just like the first day. So, and I'm not doing, saying this to, to like scare you. Um, obviously like you will survive, like you will be fine. You'll get through it. I'm just telling you my, how this went for me. So, um, I was cluster feeding, so I was 
I, had, I finally got to the remote and made sure it kept st stayed next to me so I could reach it. But sometimes it was difficult. Um, so I would push the button up and down. It would help me go up and down. And then um, that was the only way I was able to sit up and lay down was the buttons. I physically could not. Um, and by the time it was ready for more medicine, I was like, please give it to me because I was in so much pain. So but they were not on top of the medications. I was like calling the nurse because I really needed the medications really badly. Um, but my nurses were freaking incredible. They were so much help and like just so encouraging. Like they were just so sweet. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about my hospital's nurses at all. They were incredible. And my doctor, of course, was beyond incredible. So after that night, the very next day um, would have been, I had her Wednesday morning at one in the morning. We went home Thursday evening around eight o'clock. Um, I know that's like really quick to leave for a C-section. Um, I'm th not really sure why we were out so early. Um, we have a really good connection with our doctor. Um, so I don't know if that's why we were like really trying to get home to be with our daughter, um, Hayden. She's five and because of the COVID going on, she was not allowed to be in the hospital at all. We were not allowed to have anybody here besides just me and my husband. So we obviously wanted to be home as quickly as possible and it was just more comfortable at home, which honestly I could have stayed another day because of being able to have the hospital beds up and down and having like help with the nurses and all that. Honestly, I could have stayed another day, but I know my husband was really wanting to get home and obviously I wanted to get home to see my daughter as well, but that's besides the point. So Thursday night we got home. I was just so swollen. I just remember being so, so swollen and so much in pain. Like walking was really painful. Um, you know, you just have to be very careful. Like lifting your legs is very painful. My feet were so swollen. Like it was ridiculous. I didn't get swollen at all the entire pregnancy. Like nothing got swollen on me at all besides like my stomach obviously like was growing um but my hands my feet legs did not get swollen at all um but after my c-section i don't know if it was the extra fluid um i'm pretty sure it was all the fluid that i got throughout um laboring for 19 hours and then going to the c-section and then having that recovery like i had so much fluid being like pumped into me um through my iv that i was just so swollen um so it was just really rough i just remember um having such a hard time sitting up in bed i would be like pr try to prop up obviously this is our bed right now i'm just filming on our bed um but this is where i sleep and this is where my husband sleeps so i would have like pillows stacked up um try to sit up in bed but like trying to breastfeed at night is very difficult so you definitely want to like make sure you have someone to help or like these tips that i will let you in on in just a few seconds now fast forward it is sunday and i would say about thursday or friday was when my swollenness my swelling went down and i finally felt normal again and not in any pain i actually quit taking my pain medication um three days ago and i'm like pretty much all good a little like it's a little sensitive where my scar is right now but it's not like in pain it's just more like sensitive if that makes sense on may 1st i believe is is was friday and that's pretty much when i like got up in the morning and went to the bathroom and i have like a full mirror and i was like looking at my stomach and everything looking at my, my body and like i just noticed a huge difference in my swelling like i looked way smaller than what i was looking like before it was about like a week and two to three days that my it took my swelling like it took until my swelling went down my feet were all the way down and my stomach was all the way down obviously i'm not like flat flat or anything not at all i, I just still have like the belly fat like the regular stuff that i just like put on during the pregnancy but it's not like the fluid swelling i'm just back to like what I would be without the baby and without the fluids and all that. So that's just my recovery right now into Sunday and I'm feeling really good. Um, it was a rough week, that's for sure. People would ask me how I was doing and usually I'm someone who sugarcoats it and I'm just like, oh, I'm doing fine. I would be like, I'm having a really rough recovery, but it will be okay. I definitely need to stay on my pain meds, but I'm, you know, I was just, yeah, I, it was rough, but it's all good. I'm doing really well now. Obviously, I still have to take it easy. Um, a C-section for with my hospital, your re restrictions are for six weeks. You can't pick up more than um, the weight of a milk jug. And you also cannot drive for six weeks. So, obviously, I'm quarantined anyway. Can't even really leave. So, 
that's kind of what positive <laughs> about quarantined right now is I can't drive regardless so um, but it is kind of annoying sometimes when I just need to get like one thing and I have to like make sure my husband gets it after work or whatever um, but yeah so that is my like personal journey of the c-section right now um, but now I want to kind of go into my 10 tips that really helped me um, kind of stay sane during this recovery week and we can have almost and I just really think it'll really help you guys so definitely get your notepads out start writing these tips down because they are golden in my opinion so the first tip I have I have my notes here um, just written down just so I have I stay on track even though I've been mumbling this whole time probably um, but the first tip I have is to set timers on your phone to make sure you're staying on top of your pain meds because if you and I'm saying these that sometimes I didn't do that I wish I would have that's why I'm writing these tips down because there would be times when I would have fallen asleep or taken a nap and I didn't have an alarm set or anything and I would wake up in so much pain I literally couldn't even sit up at all and I had to have my husband go bring me my pain meds and my water so I could take the pain medication and let it sit in before I could even sit up. It was that bad. Um, so setting alarms in your phone so that you don't miss those times when you are supposed to be taking those pain meds is like very vital. Um, I w what I was doing was writing notes in my phone saying like when I took my pain meds last because I had one bottle that was every four hours and one bottle that was every eight hours. So sometimes it was just hard to remember when I took a certain pill at a certain time. So always in my notes, I was writing what time I took it or what time I could take it next, just so I could stay on track. But there was a couple nights that I would wake up and I would have, I fell asleep um, either breastfeeding or just fell asleep in general and didn't set an alarm and I would wake up in literally so much pain. So my number one, or my first tip is to set timers so that you are on track with your pain meds. The pain meds that I was on was Percocet ibuprofen and then I was just on a stool softener which isn't a pain med but you definitely need a stool softener TMI but it's really difficult to poop afterwards seriously um yeah it was mm, it's hard and finally I'm like getting to the regular place I just took my last stool softener yesterday I'm gonna try to not take it for a couple days and see how my body is adjusting if it's regular yet or not um, but yeah, that is the one definitely difficult part. It's very difficult to poop. Um, and it, it does get to be painful because it's like your body is trying to like push poop out basically. And like you literally can't cause it's so hard to use those core muscles to like kind of help push it out. Um, but yeah, enough about that because I'm sure you guys don't want to hear about that. Or maybe you do because you want to know all of the details. Set timers on your phone so you stay on track of your pain meds. All right, number two, you definitely want to have pads. I don't know if people don't know this, but even if you don't have a vaginal delivery, you are still going to be bleeding down there. So these are the pads that I've been using now. My hospital did provide pads for me, which honestly, I love them a lot better than what these are because these have the wings on them. And I just hate wings on my like underwear because I feel like they just like don't mesh, mesh well. I don't know if it's because I got thick thighs or what, but it just ain't working. Um, but I've just have been using these because this is the ones that my husband picked up for me because I can't go into any stores anymore. She, he just goes in there for me and this is what I picked up. So these, I don't highly like to recommend these, but if you want to know, they are the U by Kotex Security Ultra Thin Overnight and they got the wings on them. So but my hospital had ones that don't have wings and they were a lot thicker and I really like those. So um, I'm still bleeding and you can bleed from like four, like they say uh, like from four to six weeks, you should be like done bleeding. So we'll see. I'm not even two weeks in, but I'm definitely still bleeding. So you definitely want to have pads. Also wear like big ugly underwear because you're going to be bleeding and you might like bleed through the pad or you just never know where the blood might go. So I just have like these really big, ugly underwear that I don't care if they get all gross. Um, also, I would highly suggest like high-waisted ones or just underwear that's so big that they like go over your like stomach area because you don't want anything like on your scar because it'll really hurt. By the way, I am wearing shorts. I'm just, yeah, they're just shorts and you just can't see them, but I am wearing shorts. Um, but you do just want to have something that's like high waisted. These go like to my belly button, like over my belly button, honestly. And that just makes me feel more secure also. But I also just don't want anything on my scar as well. So big ugly underwear and pads is tip number two. 
Okay, so transitioning from the blood and, you know, needing a pad and ugly underwear, I recommend you sleeping on a towel because one time, literally the one time I thought I could not sleep with the towel and I was like, I think I'm done. This was like two days ago. I was like, I'm not bleeding very much. It's very little. I think I can go without a towel. I went without a towel and it freaking leaked through my underwear somehow and I freaking got a blood stain on my freaking white sheets. It came out. We washed them and they're fine, but it was just like, of course. So... Highly recommend sleeping on a towel just so anything. Also, like, if you're breastfeeding, just so, like, if any leaking, you're just a mess, honestly. <laughs> we are a hot mess as newborn moms <laughs> and as moms in general. Let's just be real. But sleeping on a towel is just very smart, in my opinion, just so you're not getting any of your juices on the bed. Okay, tip number four. This is something that I would have never even thought of, but my bed is actually, like, really high. And the night that we got home, I tried to get into my bed and I literally couldn't. I was almost on the verge of tears because I was so frustrated because I could not get, like I could not put pressure on my body to get into the bed. It was so difficult. I have like a very soft bed so my body would just go into it and like having to like push off of it. It was just literally difficult. My husband tried to like cheerleader stunt my body into <laughs> the bed and which did not work at all because it was just putting too much pressure on my pain i was in so much pain even with the pain meds at that point it was still like very painful. um i was trying to like put my arm on the wall and like try to like push off of it as easy as i could to get in the bed i literally physically could not get in my bed it was very frustrating i almost started crying <laughs> and that could just be hormones but like i was just so mad because i was so angry that i was in so much pain and having to go through that just to get into the bed so what my husband did he actually just got um it was like a mini bucket it's like a small bucket but it gave me like a step stool to get into the bed so i could step on that and then step on the bed um and that helped tremendously so if you have something that you can step on whether that's a step stool or just something that is sturdy enough to like put your body weight on to help you get on the bed this is only if you obviously have like a high bed if you have a very low bed and don't have a difficulty getting into it then don't worry about it but if you have a high bed like me i highly recommend getting a step stool because it really helped me out getting in the bed and then off the bed also so highly recommend getting a step stool okay tip number five this is something that really helped me out so you guys have all heard of boppies i'm sure they're like breastfeeding pillows that like they're like a c shape and they go around and they just help you like hold the baby up while you're breastfeeding and all that so what i did um while i was like laying in bed i use the boppy when i'm like all out on the couch or like in the rocking chair rocking um her or like breastfeeding her in the nursery or anything i use that but in bed i reverted back to my pregnancy pillow um so i figured i would just show you guys so what I would do was I would like stack my pillows like this and then obviously this would be over there but I don't want to move for the video so I would also put this up and then um these arms right here acted as a boppy so you know in the middle of the night when you're doing those late night feedings sorry this is probably not the best view of me um but you could literally just bring the arm over and use this as a boppy instead of having to like get the boppy and try to like make it around your body because I was so swollen the boppy would not even fit over my body so it was ridiculous it was so annoying I literally could only fit it over like half my body it was so swollen it was ridiculous what I would do is I just would sleep like this I mean yeah, my feet would be out but I don't want to move them um and then anytime the baby needed fed I would grab her and then bring her in here and then just do this so that it would just be easy to hold her and I would still be sleeping sitting up. Um, it was just very easy to do that. So if you have a pregnancy pillow, which if you're pregnant, you probably do because I feel like every pregnant person usually gets a pregnancy pillow. If you don't, get them on, them on Amazon. I'll link the one I have down below. I love it. Uh, I'm hoping to not use it forever because it takes up so much room in our bed and I like to cuddle my husband and this obviously like gets in the way, but for right now, um, I've been using it some, just depends, but like highly recommend for, um, when you're going through the whole C-section recovery to use a pregnancy pillow. So it just acts like a boppy. It's just very easy. Instead of having to grab the pillow and the baby, you already have the pillow there and just like whip the legs around and you're good to go. Okay. So tip number six, this is like very smart in my opinion. Um, you want to have everything bedside and in like a basket that you can easily grab. 
I don't know if you can see right here, but this is like my nightstand. Um, and so I have this basket here. And so if I'm like asleep or whatever, I can easily just grab the whole basket and bring it over here instead of having to get up and like go grab stuff or like have to like gather multiple things. Everything is in a basket that I would possibly need for the baby. So um, I just have wipes. I have diapers in here. I have diaper rash cream. I have a um, pacifier and I don't have it in here right now, but I, I would have my Hawka in here also. Um, breastfeeding pads um, or like nipple pads. Um, and that's pretty much typically, oh, in like a, a burp cloth I usually have in here as well. But um, it's just really convenient to have like a basket or just a container that you can have everything in here that you can easily grab. Because if you have to sit up, it's very difficult. Like I, the, the entire week of recovery, I'm only using my arms to move. I can't like get, I can't use my muscles, core muscles whatsoever to sit up. So I was literally like pushing off the like headboard i was using my like arms to pull my body up like this or to sit up just literally trying so hard to use only my arm muscles and nothing like lower body at all because you literally just can't that's just how it is um so being able to just reach over grab this instead of having to sit up and like move it just really is like a lifesaver to be honest and then tip number seven you want to wear loose comfy pjs I will show you the pair that or one pair that I have. My mom actually went out and got me this because when I got home, um, I literally could not wear anything and I had no PJs, like nothing that I could easily breastfeed in and nothing that was loose enough that it was comfortable. So the very first couple nights I was just in my underwear and bra or underwear and nothing else because you're breastfeeding. So hello, your boobs are just going to be like out. So, um, but my mom, my mom, my sweet mom, she went to Target and bought me like a bunch of PJs that were like very breastfeeding friendly, very big and comfy. Um, so this is just one of the outfits for an idea. Um, this is like a pajama dress. So it goes all the way down, um, but it is a button up so that you can easily button it down to breastfeed and it's very loose and you just don't feel like constricted at all, but you're still like in something that's gonna keep you warm. This comes in very handy to have loose comfy pajamas. So I highly recommend if you do like a shorts and shirt set, like a loose shirt with shorts, you wanna have the shorts be like very loose and big on you and like something that's gonna come above your waist. Um, nothing that's gonna be tight against your scar because like, like I said, it's just very painful. Even on pain meds, it's just like you are beyond miserable if you miss your pain meds. Okay, and then tip number eight, I already kind of touched on, but in the hospital, they did give me a belly band. I've gotten a couple people asking me like what belly band it is. I have no idea. Um, on the tag, it says comfort. I will leave it up here. Comfort. It's not comfort. It's comfort. Abdominal binder. And that's all it says. Um... It was like in a box and they just gave it to me, but this is literally it. And I love this. Um, I can only, I mean, I can put it on myself, but it's not very tight when I do it myself. It's very hard to like wrap it and like get it really tight because it's very stretchy. Um, so I was having my husband put this on me, or like wrap it while I held the other side so it could be really tight because I don't know. I feel like it's weird because you would think you wouldn't want anything like holding your scar or like holding your belly in when you're in pain. But for me, it felt very secure and very, like, held together. And I feel like with your belly, like, hanging more, if that, that's, like, weird. But with your belly, like, hanging and loose, um, it was more painful than when it was, like, all, like, in a bear hug and, like, very secure. So, um, I had this on the very next day that I gave birth. So, uh, I don't wear this every day. I do not wear this all day. I just wear it randomly. I need to start wearing it again. I haven't worn it in the last couple of days. But I was wearing it the very first, um, like, four or five days of recovery, and it really helped me and made me feel, like, a lot more secure, and I feel like it definitely did help my swelling go down. I probably will either keep wearing this or switch to, like, my waist trainer eventually <clears throat> just to help my waist, like, kind of inch down better. Like I said, this is what my hospital gave me. I didn't buy it or anything, so I don't have anything, like, to link down below for you guys. So I'm sorry about that. Maybe you guys should call your hospital to see, like, what they offer for a C-section or what they offer 
or if they do have belly bands that they will provide but they gave me this and they didn't give me one for my first daughter's c-section and i went to the same hospital so this is like a newer thing um within the last five years so but i highly recommend that it definitely helped me feel a lot more like it was like less painful for my stomach to not be like hanging um so i liked this tip number nine almost done guys tip number nine definitely keep your feet up when you're sitting I would, like I said, my feet were very swollen, but anytime I would just sit on the couch with my feet like on the ground or sit anywhere like on a kitchen chair or like on the steps and just have my feet like, like you were sitting and they were like touching the floor, I would stand up like 10 minutes later and my feet had swollen like double its size. It was ridiculous. Double like than what it was already swollen because the blood just like goes all the way down and the fluid goes all the way down to your feet. So every time you're sitting, you need to have your feet propped up on a pillow, on a footstool, on a table, have your feet up as much as possible. Um, even when you're sleeping, try to have a pillow underneath your feet or underneath your legs. It really does help. Um, you could see like my feet physically like going down, um, the longer I would sit with my feet up, um, compared to like sitting down. So that definitely helps and I highly recommend keeping your feet up as long as possible. And obviously you're recovering from a C-section, so you shouldn't be doing too much anyway. But if you're like me, you just don't give yourself grace very well so you want to be doing like everything and getting everything done so it was very difficult for me but definitely keep your feet up and then tip number 10 ask for help do not be ashamed for needing help and that is something i need to preach to myself but my husband was a huge help for me my mom was a huge help for me my daughter is a huge help for me um if you didn't see my vlog it was on tuesday i vlogged and i was still like in the kind of painful recovery type of situation um but she was able to grab things for me she's such a good help she's five so it's very good she listens very well and so anytime i needed anything she would go get it right away she's very helpful like in the middle of the night when i was in so much pain and i literally could not get up i would be like babe i need you to please get up and grab my pain meds grab me my water or grab me diapers or grab me something to help me out i cannot I literally could not it's just hard in the middle of the night because obviously I'm the one feeding I'm breastfeeding so there's not much that my husband can do at that point or that's just how our situation is I don't know how you work it out with your um, husband or partner but that's just how it was for us but definitely ask for help if you need help moving things you know take it easy you are literally recovering from a major surgery so give yourself grace and ask for help do not be ashamed for help because you will need help but to finish this video off, I'm sorry it's very long, but I just wanted to give you guys the best info that I could. But I am like almost a week, I'm, I'm about a week and a half um, post-op or post-operation, post-C-section, postpartum, whatever you want to call it. And I'm doing a lot better, doing very well. Um, I feel way better about myself, way like more like normal my body feels way more normal now i feel like the first couple days i was just like oh my gosh why am i this big after i just had a baby like this is ridiculous i should not be this swollen i seriously like felt like i looked like i was still like eight not eight months pregnant it was ridiculous which everybody is different and I, but i was just very good, like with for some reason i think it's all about the fluid that they pumped in me to be honest because with my first c-section my belly went down like very quickly not really sure but that is all about my c-section and i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope it was very helpful if it was please 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 give it a big 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 thumbs up give it a big thumbs up comment down below your tips uh for a c-section recovery or if this video helped you just comment down below it'll really help me out definitely subscribe if you aren't already and next video will probably be either probably a vlog but then um after that i will be filming my birth story soon so explaining everything that actually happened with my VBAC attempt so if you're interested in that definitely stay tuned and i will see you guys in the next video thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day bye